Hey there beer hunters, welcome to another episode of The Beer Huntress. I hope you're all exceptionally well. My name's Jo, I'm the manageress of a real ale and craft beer bar in Wigan in Greater Manchester called Wigan Central and we are all about the beer. That's exactly why I'm here for you today, I'm here to review a beer for you. I don't know what it's going to be yet, so we're going to turn to the Wheel of Styles, hashtag made by John, and this is going to pick the style for me. I'm going to talk a bit about the style history, a bit about the brewery history, and then we're going to review the tasting notes. So, without further ado, shall we decide what style we're going to have? Here we go. So we're going to go down the lager family and uh, what better place to start than in Germany? I know which one we're going to have. With Crispy Boys, I thought it was really important to go as a traditional as possible for the first one. So I've selected Kulsch or Kulsch, depending upon your pronunciation, as the first style to go for. And who better but to do Fruz? The German city of Köln or Cologne, depending upon if you want to do the German or the English pronunciation, has a brewing history going back to the Middle Ages. Although they were producing beers from the ale family at the time, with them being a lot closer to Belgium than they were to Bavaria. It wasn't until the 1800s that they started to produce beers that were close to the lager family. They did this in order to be able to compete with the other German styles that were coming out in the country. The Reheinsgebot is a series of regulations which limit the ingredients that can be used in beer in Germany. The Reheimsgebot, which literally translates as purity order, is the 1516 Bavarian law which dictates the only ingredients that can be used to produce German beer. And that is water, malt and hops. There's no mention of yeast as an ingredient in the Reheimsgebot law. And this is because at the time they were still knowingly using yeast, but they considered it to be a part of the brewing process rather than as an ingredient. They were utilising the yeast in the brewing process skimming it off the top and then reusing it for further batches and so it became more of a permanent character of the process itself. It wasn't until they started to understand the chemical basis and how the fermentation process worked that they started to understand that yeast was actually an ingredient that was involved in beer. The Kolsch is a very unique style. It's fermented using ale yeast, but it's subjected to lagering and to cold conditioning. So fermented at very cold temperature and a lot colder than a lot of most ales. It's one of only a very small selection of beers and styles that use this particular method that kind of transcend the ale and the lager family. Competing against Pilsner style lagers, they decided that it was important to safeguard the Kolsch's style and they lobbied for what's called the Kolsch Convention. The Kolsch Convention that was signed in 1986 outlines a definition for the Kolsch style. It restricts it to production by breweries within Köln or Cologne and a few surrounding areas, 50 kilometers to be exact. Any beers that were produced outside of this area wouldn't be allowed to use the term Kulsch. They could either use it as a Kulsch style, but they couldn't use the traditional term itself. Along with defining the style and the regions where the beer could be produced, they also introduced recommendations for the serving ritual. 200 millilitres would be served at a time in a glass called a stange, and this would be topped up with a little mark being put on your beer mat until you were ready to finish and then you put your beer mat on top of your glass and they'd come up and do your Reichenang. In 1997, Polsch became a product of the Protected Geographical Indication, which is the PGI, and this expanded its production all the way through the EU. There are currently 13 breweries in and around Cologne or Cologne that meet this convention. These are anchored by Fru, Gefahl, Reisdorf and Kulner Verbond. 
The style of Kolsch is a very clean and crisp, and perfectly balanced, very refreshing beer. It's got hints of fruit to it, some honey notes and grainy sweet base malt. So I have my Stange, or the closest thing I could find to one. Shall we uh, take a look at the bottle and then we'll crack this open? Germans and Belgians aren't particularly exciting with their artwork, I have to say. It's a bit boring, but um, certainly recognisable. You'll all know this imagery before. A little bit of info on the back. Ingredients, not much else than that. So Brews showing you it's established in 1904 and it's considered to be one of the top Kolsch producers in Cologne. gone for the closest thing I could get to a stange, so it's a half pint glass, but about 200 ml is going to take me to about there, so that's what we're going to pour to. As expected, point very crisp and clean, very bright, nice little bit of carbonation going on here. I've got a slight head keeper in the glass, which is going to just add to this. Beautiful clean white head. This just almost clear liquid. It's just um, slightly off yellow. Um, yeah, really, really nice, beautiful light gold color. So. Mm. You can smell the sweet malt on this grains and cereals. Yeah, it's like Weetabix. <laughs> that touch of honey coming through too. Yes. Mm. Smell that all day. Great carbonation. Really crisp quite dry. That malt profile, lovely sweetness. The back of the palate at the moment is getting quite all that Weetabix grain coming through again. I can never identify the fruit that I'm supposed to get in a colch. I always can get the honey and I can get that nice sweetness from the honey. And I can get all that cereal and that really nice sweet base malt that they're talking about. I can never really identify what fruit it is that I get. It's um, it's very subtle, whatever it is. But yeah, lovely creamy, nice and crisp and dry. It is very refreshing. Temperature for it is perfect at the moment. I've got it around about seven, eight degrees. It's that spot on for me. I like my, my lagers to be just a touch higher than extra cold, as you've seen some heathen places serve them. But yeah, I like to be able to taste my lagers. Yeah. That cereal just sits on the front of the palate, washes off across the tongue. Adding a touch of sweetness, honey just dancing across the palate as it's going with it, and then that really nice wheat of excess cereal flavour on the top of the palate at the back. Finish is clean, a touch more malt on the finish, but not, a, not an awful lot. It's very crisp and clean, and very, very refreshing on the finish. And that lovely dryness. Palate's been stripped, nothing left on there. Let's go in for another sip, let's get that palate, you know refreshed again that's what i like about this kind of style it makes you want to go back for more and the carbonation just allows all that flavor to just wash across the palate heightening the taste buds pulling all that sweetness onto the tongue the roof of the mouth and down into the throat can't deny that the Germans know how to make beer and 
although this is um, you know on the lighter region, only 4.8, and we're definitely lighter in colour, and then, but it is smashing style, a fantastic beer, and they're uh, just a wonderful example of the colour. Mm. I wish I knew what that fruit was. I'm sure one of you will be able to tell me. If you've had this, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed drinking this beer. I'll enjoy the rest of this, and I shall see you next time for another episode of Beer Interest. Cheers. If you enjoyed this video guys then please like, subscribe and share it with your friends. Hit that notification button to get alerts when our new video is out. We're also on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram so check out the links in the description and follow us on there as well. If there's anything you'd like to see us review please pop it in the comments and we'll pop it in the pump for later. Keep wadge banking and I shall see you all next time for another episode of The Beer Huntress.